look at the setting sun and then 45 degrees right 45 degrees up and there you go you'll know the worst is to come in 2013 and 2014 this is because when we see this object on December 21 2012 it will be at its point of perihelion no price for guessing the object in question is of course Nibiru a common occurrence in the mumblings of conspiracy theorists, Nibiru displays a rather elusive nature when it comes to astronomical observations. Hence it is somewhat questionable whether such claims are vaguely grounded in reality or just spectres hounding the fantasies of the gullible. Fortunately, planetary motion is not subject to such guesswork, but based on precise mathematical descriptions. So let's dispense with the preliminaries and the plasma of the good stuff to this particular celestial concoction. About 400 years ago, Johannes Kepler showed that the planets revolve in elliptical orbits, with the Sun in one of the foci. The point of greatest distance is called aphelion, that of least distance perihelion. The Sun also experiences a gravitational tug from the planets and hence wobbles. Because this movement is comparably minuscule, I consider the Sun as motionless in the following calculation. Nibiru supposedly has an orbital period of 3,600 years. Knowing this, I use Kepler's third law to compute Nibiru's semi-major axis. The gravitational constant G equals 6.673 times 10 to the power of minus 11 cubic meters per kilogram second squared. The mass of the Sun M amounts to 1.9891 times 10 to the power of 30 kilograms. And as you might have guessed, T is the orbital period. This gives us the semi-major axis at 235 astronomical units, or 235 times the distance between Sun and Earth. Since Nibiru believers seem a bit incoherent on this matter, I will assume that at perihelion Nibiru comes to within one astronomical unit of the Sun. Consequently, the aphelion would reach 469 astronomical units into space. Just to compare this value, Voyager 1 currently transits the Helios Heath, the outermost layer of the Helios Sphere, at a distance of 122 astronomical units from the Sun. Obeying the geometry of ellipses, I can now determine the orbit. The semi-minor axis forms a right angle triangle with the distance from focus to center as the other leg and the length of the semi-major axis as hypotenuse. Plotted to scale, the orbit appears as a very squashed ellipse, with extreme eccentricity. Having determined the orbital parameters allows me to compute Nibiru's position with respect to time, the crucial step in analyzing its feasibility. Because the preceding math is rather tedious, I will skip forward to the solution, but encourage everyone interested to read through the links below. In this image you can see the trajectory during an interval of 360 days. For orientation I roughly include the orbits of Earth, Mars and Jupiter. The 10 day position markers show the acceleration as Nibiru nears its perihelion. At a maximum velocity of 42.1 km per second it would travel within a hair's breadth of escape velocity. Understandably such a constellation would be highly unstable. But crucially during a whole year, Nibiru would be within a distance of 5 astronomical units and hence easily visible to the naked eye. As reference, Jupiter is one of the brightest objects in the night sky. And since Nibiru is usually pictured as comparable in size, it would be obvious to anyone with the head not mired in a bubble of their own convenience. Unlike the vague hand wavings of anemic brains that can be construed into whatever best fits the current flavor of absurdity, Mathematics speaks with absolute clarity. Well, that's in view of not seeing any celestial harbinger of doom. The evidence points conclusively towards it being merely a figment of the imagination. <laughs>